Well, Mr. Laurent Bouillon, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. Hey, Laurent, great to see you. Hey, Christina, it's awesome to see you too. How are you doing? I'm, wa I'm awesome, I'm awesome. I, I wish that I could see you in person, but I'm so glad that I get to at least talk to you this way. And I'm so glad that you're going to walk me through the process of migrating an ASP.NET app to Azure App Service. Absolutely. Yeah, this is very exciting. And in fact, uh, this is some content that we have been preparing for quite a while and we'll be showing this content uh, around the world in the next few months. So please uh, stay tuned in your regions because you're going to see that content. But, you know, I thought I would uh, take the advantage of showing you a little bit more about what we are doing. And one point which is super interesting for us um, is that we, you know, a lot of firms have old ASP.NET applications. Yeah. Uh, ASP.NET was released in 2001, right? So we have really quite a, no quite a lot of old uh, workloads around. Right, so, it so, could so, be so interesting you're, to see right, how so this stuff might be 20 years old, right? Yeah, I mean, .NET is uh, 20 years old, and uh, of course, we don't support those versions anymore. But interestingly, we even support versions which go all the way down to uh, ASP.NET 3.5. And 3.5 is already quite a few years old, right? Definitely, definitely. And, and from what I understand, like what you're kind of trying to, to, to show off with this demo is that even older apps can still take advantage of a, of a PaaS scenario. Exactly. So one scenario that we see is that very often when uh, developers and uh, when clients want to move to the cloud, their first reaction is to say, oh, we are going to do a VM. And we are going to take our uh, you know, web server and just make an image of that and move it to the VM. Right. And uh, we say, you know, it's perfectly fine as an entry point, but maybe you want to do something which is a little bit more advanced and maybe you want to move to platform as a service to pause. And especially after that, you can also take advantage of all the services we have around. Things like, for example, uh, Azure Key Vault, which I'm going to show in the demo in a moment, or Azure Functions to you know, add some intelligence to your application uh, together with cognitive services, for example. So really, there are a lot of things that we can do around that. Um, and uh, it's really nice because we have tools that can help you. And there are always multiple phases when you do a migration like that. We have an assessment first. Well, you can really, you know, very quietly in your office, peacefully assess your uh, IIS web server or whatever web server you're using and, and see if the migration is going to happen easily or if you have to change something first. That's awesome. So rather than having to go through the whole process and maybe see something break and maybe realize after you've done all that work that it, it's not the, the, maybe the right fit, you can do it in advance and assess before you, you, you start that process. Exactly, and we have tools to do that. And so uh, I did prepare a small video, and this video is recorded just to make sure that everything w works fine. So if you Love agree, it. maybe we can uh, we can see it together. Yeah. So I would say let's roll the video. Let's roll the video. In this demo, we will start with an old web application running on-premise. It's not a critical website for Tailwind traders, so they don't want to spend too much time updating it, but they want to take advantage of the app service infrastructure on Azure. As you can see here, this is an old ASP.NET 3.5 website. In fact, it is even a web forms website, which was a very popular technology quite a few years ago. Let's take a look at the website itself. We see that it is a rewards management site. And one thing we noticed is that Tailwind Traders had the connection string in the web config file. This is not a great practice because the connection string may end up in source control and also it makes it difficult to have a different connection string, for example, for test purpose. Here we can easily fix the data access handler. We are going to look for a connection string in the environment variables instead. This way we can have a local settings file using a test connection string and we'll set the production database in Azure later. We can remove the connection string from the web config now because we don't need it anymore and we also probably want to clean up GitHub. Let's switch to the App Service Migration Assistant. At this point in the demo, we have already performed an assessment earlier and we have changed a few settings to ensure that the migration runs smoothly. We can now configure the migration itself. So I will use an existing resource group. I am logged in with my Azure credentials and uh, I could also create a new resource group directly from here. I'm going to enter a site name and of course this is a working domain only uh, because later we will set a custom domain. I'm going to change the region to something closer to my users. I create a new service plan and here on this website I can go and compare the various options. 
The good thing with App Service is that you can easily scale up to a more powerful plan or scale down to save money. At this point, my on-premise database has a public IP address so I can skip the database setup. If the database was private only, we would set up a hybrid connection, but here it's out of scope for this demo. So now we can go and start the migration. In the video here, I speed things up a little bit. In reality, it takes a few minutes. And when the migration is complete, we can go and visit the website. So let's go and start by inspecting the resources created. We see the app service and the app service plan. In the app service, we can open the application settings. We need to set the connection string because we removed it from web config. So I'm pasting it here. And then I'm going to save the configuration. This restarts the web application, but note that there is no downtime during this time. Now we can go and open the website. Let's take a look. We see that it works exactly like before, so this is a success. Note that it is running on Azure now, so that's great. And we can look for another client, for example, Sophie here, and we see that the connection to the database is working just fine. Since we are on App Service now, we can take advantage of all the monitoring solutions, for example, Application Insights. This is really powerful and very easy to set up here without modifying the application. In this .NET application, we are going to automatically collect information about performance, exceptions, and even the SQL commands. Of course, we can also instrument the application code with custom event later if we want. Taking a look at the data, of course, right now there is nothing here, but we are now collecting already some information. And if we come back in some time, we will see graphs and logs and all kinds of useful information. We can also see uh, an application map, a live map of the application and all the components. We can inspect things like performance information, etc. Now, one thing that bothers me a little is that the connection string is visible to all the developers. And of course, there is a risk of someone mangling it. And it would be better to protect the secret. So we are going to take advantage of platform as a service here and create an Azure Key Vault. First, we will give an identity to this application so it can be allowed to interact with the Azure Key Vault. And this is done through Azure Active Directory, but we can configure it directly in the portal here. I'm going to copy the object ID for later. Now I can go and create the Azure Key Vault. Like any resource on Azure, you can do that in the Azure portal with a command line, with other tools. I'm going to need a name and a region, just like for any Azure resource. And we can use a standard tier, which is a little bit cheaper than the premium and which is sufficient for our needs. After the creation is done, we can go to the Key Vault itself and we are going to configure an access policy. We will give our web application a get access to the secrets. As you can see, you can finely tune here who has access to what resources. We are going to select the web application from the principles list and we see that everything seems to be configured properly. The next step is to add the configuration string to the list of secrets. We are going to give it a name and we can paste the value that we had before in the web application. Note that you can also set an activation and expiration date and you can also manually disable the secret at any time. So it means that the Key Vault administrator can decide who has access to what secrets when. We need the secret identifier, which is a URI. This way we can refer to the secret from the web app service. Let's copy the secret URI, and then we are going to go back to the app settings in the website, and we are going to replace the connection string. So here we need a simple syntax to refer to the key vault at Microsoft.keyVault, and then we paste the secret URI that we just copied. Like this, we have a direct access to the key vault, but the secret itself is hidden. We see here the key vault reference has been recognized by the app service. And so if we go back to the website at this point and work with the website again, we see that everything seems to be working just fine. Amazing, amazing. Laurent, that was fantastic. What a fantastic demo. I really loved seeing uh, the integration with Key Vault because that connection string, you know, especially as, as in your example, you know, you've got an older app and it might not be using most modern security practices. And this is a way that you can move it to the past. And even though you could just make the connection string only visible in the portal, that's still not a best practice. So being able to take that next level and use it with Key Vault, that's really, really cool. 
Yeah, the really nice thing with Key Vault is that you can have role-based access control, and so you can have one uh, you know, trusted person or, or maybe a team of trusted people who can have access to that, who are managing all the secrets. And, and we are not talking just about connection string, right? We are talking also about keys or about a certificate, for example, for the uh, TLS, uh, settings, etc. Uh, and then after that, the developers get access to that connection string, but in an indirect manner. And so they don't need to manage it. They There are no risk to mangle it. And it's definitely not going to end up on, uh, on GitHub. Also, another thing which I didn't mention in the demo is that this way, it's very easy to have a local connection string going to a test database. Oh, nice. But then when you deploy... Yeah, when you deploy to uh, to Azure via uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, then in the production site, you have a totally different connection stream. That's awesome. So you can have it really configured to work with your CI CD workflow uh, locally mm -hmm. uh, as well. That's really cool. Um, and, and I mean, yeah. As you mentioned kind of earlier, obviously there are a lot of ways you could migrate your app, but it seems like to me, like one of the advantages of this approach is kind of what I was saying, like this gives you an opportunity to modernize things um, in a way that maybe you wouldn't be able to do that if you were doing another migration strategy. Is that an accurate thing to say, would you say? Yeah, it's really accurate. And, and the thing that I really like with the tools we have is that we always have these two phases, right? We have an assessment phase where you can really very peacefully check what's going on. And it's also the same with data. For example, later, uh, you know, in the next session, I would probably migrate the database, which is a SQL server to Azure right. SQL database. And again, the same thing, we, you can go and assess the database. And if you see that you need maybe more power or something else, you can maybe take, a, you know, a bigger version of the database, something like Azure SQL Database Manager, uh, manage instance, for example, um, but uh, you have peace of mind. You can do that really quietly without breaking anything. And being able to move really gradually to the to the web, you know, to to Azure in a, uh, in a step by step manner. Where in the beginning, maybe you're going to have a hybrid environment, and that's perfectly fine. In fact, we know that most of our clients have hybrid environments anyway, right? So so you can really go step by step. You can go uh, really quietly, peacefully, and that's really nice to uh, to, to see. And you were you mentioned before, you know that uh, I guess this could support. That what what version of .NET does this support? This supports uh, uh, all the way back to .NET three point five. Yeah, so we support uh, .NET 3.5, which was a tremendously popular version. And again, right, web forms runs on that and everything. We support, uh, of course, mo more modern version of sure. ASP.NET, uh, of the framework, which are 4.7, 4.8. But of course, uh, at some point, we might encourage you maybe to think about moving to ASP.NET Core, which is really where we concentrate our investments now. Uh, I don't know if you saw Scott Hunter's demo yes. about .NET, .NET 5, but this is really it's super so exciting. exciting. So exciting. Yeah, and, and so... So probably you want to do that. And here too, we have some tools and we have some uh, some helper tools who can help you evaluate your application and see if migrating to ASP.NET Core or even possibly ASP.NET Framework 4.7, for example, is going to be easy or not. Yeah, no, that was actually going to be my next question. I was going to say, you know, um, I, obviously we have these evaluation tools to see how the migration will go, but will this also let you find out like if you could even migrate to a more modern version? And it sounds like you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, if you want to get started with migration, I can recommend everybody to go to Azure Migrate. And so this is a you know, website that we have. It's, a, it's in fact a, a portal, we should say, because this is where you find everything related to migration. And very often when people hear about migration, they think about VMs and definitely we support that. We support virtual desktops as well. But we do also have solutions to migrate the data to platform as a service, as well as like I just demonstrated, uh, ASP.NET application, .NET applications, or even PHP applications. If you have those, we can e even migrate those using the tools. Awesome, so you can even use PHP. That's actually really great because I think that opens mm -hmm. things up. I, I didn't even know that. That opens things up to a lot of uh, different uh, web applications, especially as you were saying, in a hybrid environment, which we know a lot of people are going to be in. This would be one way to start that gradual process of moving things to the cloud. Uh, Laurent, uh, I, I've just got a, a, a minute or so left with you, but where can people go to learn more and to kind of take the next steps if they want to uh, try this out themselves? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So probably the best way to do is go, uh, first of all, in our documentation, we have tremendous documentation, like, you know, docs.microsoft.com. We have everything uh, explained in detail. And in fact, I had myself, you know, when I when I learned <laughs> uh, to, to prepare everything, I went into there and I find the documentation. Uh, but also, like I said, the hub, uh, you know, uh, Azure Migrate. Uh, so if you go to azure.com slash migrate, for example, this is where you will find uh, the entry point. We have a lot of white papers. We have a lot of information 
information about that. Uh, and finally, if you stay tuned and uh, check, uh, of course, the Ignite content, but also in the next few months, we are going to have a lot of events showing content about how to migrate, how to modernize an application. And this is probably a great place to go and to, and to learn all about that. Laurent, thank you so, so much um, for, for joining me. And it's always great talking with you. If our conversation Likewise. piqued your interest 